Hello, everyone. This is the David Goodman Reality and Truth Show. My name is Vanita Lambert, and this is Donna Boyne, my co-host. She's back. Um, she was out for a little while because she is uh, a CNA, and she does personal care service, but that assignment is over. So she's back with us for the meantime. And welcome back, Donna. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you for having me, and I'm so happy to be here today. You look... And I just, go ahead. I just want to give a big shout out to everyone that's been asking about Donna. I'm right here today, and I just want to <laughs> say shout out to Marlene and... Um, Lavinia. Lavinia. I love you guys. Thank you for always watching us. I love you guys. Yeah, you know how that came about? I went out to see um, Miss Lavinia. And I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. I'm sorry if I'm not. Um, and one of the first things she said to me, she was like, well, where's Donna? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, okay, you know, I will let her know that you asked about her. So it's nice. I mean, personally, I am so happy that you guys watch us because, yes. you know, without an audience, you know, there's no one, there's no show. So we really do appreciate do. that. Um, you know, you guys can uh, send us information. Yes. You have my cell phone number. You can text me if there's a particular subject you want to hear about. Um, and we'll be happy to try to get some information on that subject and talk about it. But once again, we do appreciate your support. We really do. Because when you think about and, um, so many TV shows that is on TV, and you know to know that they're watching us and even asking about us is it's very interested and we really appreciate that yeah Victoria. i'm so excited i feel like i have a fan base now <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for that we do appreciate it um okay so today i want to give my little two minute COVID speech um, I know that we're doing really well. I heard some talk about lifting mask mandates mm -hmm. inside, yes. which is a good sign because that means a lot of people are vaccinated. And, you know, I guess we're up at, um, you know, the level Level. that we need to be. I know we're over 75% in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Connecticut is doing a lot better than some other states. But anyway, continue to do your part to crush COVID. I always want to say that because I love walking around and you know going into the gym or whatever i i still wear my mask in the gym and in the grocery store where there's a lot of people but i want to get back to that i i'm, I'm so tired of this mask thing <laughs> but the thing about it um i think this is just my opinion i think that is too early to call right now i think they need to kind of hold it not to give it um, a mandate, but you can put it out there. Who don't want to wear it, don't wear it. But for me, whether or not they lift it, I'm going to still wear my mask, go out. Exactly. Yes. That's your personal choice yes. to do what you want. We're not telling anybody what to do. This is, you know, full disclaimer, just our opinion. Yes. And just things that we've heard, you know, on TV. Here's a, something else I heard and, and seen on TV. I was looking at the truckers at the Canadian oh. border. One of my clients is a operator owner for 18 wheeler. And I was talking to him earlier this week. We had an appointment this morning at 11 and he wasn't sure if he was going to be able to make it because of they are because of what they're doing, the protests they're having at the Canadian border, right at the border. Yes. And here's the thing they said either 80, and I guess we could fact check this at least 80, maybe 90, but I want to say 80% of the truck drivers are fully vaccinated or 80% of all Canadians are vaccinated. So it's a small minority that's causing all this, uh, this, yes. this funk, this noise about mask mandates. And it's supposed to come so over what, to the U.S. side. So, so what are they saying? They don't want the mask to be they, lifted? Or? Yeah, they do not want vaccine requirements. Because I guess you have to show your... Um, your vaccine card, card to go like a, into certain companies. Yes. Like if you had, like if there's a trucker that maybe had to deliver to a particular hospital and that hospital had restrictions that everybody there had to be vaccinated. And if the trucker wanted to deliver there, 
they have would to. have to show that as well because they don't want other people infected. I, I believe it's something on those lines. They just don't want the mask mandate. They don't want the vaccine mandate. They just want to, you know, have things go back to normal without doing anything at all. What I'm I, what <laughs> so I, I don't know. This is my little two cent and that because I never see the, the I never watch the news concerning oh, the Oh, I do. I have to but watch the news. <laughs> I stood just listening to you, but this is just my two little two cent. Uh huh. Um, I think with the truckers, them knowing where the vaccine and the COVID um, thing is right today, mm -hmm. I don't think they should really um, put such a high. Bar, you know, on them. bar on them. They're all like alone that. in their truck, you know? Yeah. They don't really have, con my brother is the owner operator. He drives nationwide. He's all alone. Exactly. You, if you put somebody in a truck with you, that's extra liability. You have to have extra insurance and all that. So they're alone. But I guess when they get to a certain location, they come in contact with people in the shipping department and loading department and things like that. But so, it's required by the state, of, yeah. um, by this state, that you have to have two persons traveling in a truck, don't it? Oh, you I don't. To. I don't know what the root, what the yes. policy is. You have. You to have to have, have two people traveling two, in a truck in case. You have to have a backup driver in case something you feel sick or anything. Uh, I don't think that's I. I don't think that's accurate because my brother. Really? Yeah, I no, want. No, it's just a question because I was. Oh, told a question? That. No, yeah. no, it isn't. Because uh -oh. my brother drives alone and he drives nationwide. He goes to all the states, Connecticut, and it's just him. He does. There's no requirement okay. for him to have, have somebody, somebody else in a truck. Him. Oh okay. no, definitely not. But anyway, that's enough about that. I want to talk about. Um, Per Marlene's request, um, I met Marlene, and thank you so much. It was a pleasure meeting her. I know there's some really nice people watching us, and it was just a pleasure to, to get to see some of the audience that's watching us. And um, so we were, she was, we were talking about, um, what was that? Your subject, you were talking about. Oh, we were talking about the Pastor, pastor, Ke the pastor Kevin Smith. Yes, yes, Pastor that, Kevin Smith. Um, I wasn't sure what his name was. Okay. Actually, um, with him, as the last news that I heard about him, like he met in an, a fatal accident um, while going to court. And um, in that process, um, they met in an accident, and both him and the two officers died. In a car accident? In a car accident for the very first appearance in court. Oh, and my goodness. So what does that tell you? So that, you know, that show you that something is not right there because after that is like everything crushed. Everything and shuts here. down. You don't hear nothing more concerning it. You don't know what's going on. But there are a lot of different news that's going around, you know, about him. But I don't really follow it anymore because I see where that going and I just leave it there. But um, there's a lot going on and saying. I'm going to say there was a lot going on. He was responsible for all that was going on, and now he's dead. So yeah. what else can happen except to get shut down? Or does somebody else step into his shoes and take over? Well, there, of course. Oh, there, there, okay. there are people that they say step into his shoes, taking over underneath the quiet. And oh. there's a lot of people also um, was um, imprisoned because of so much um, body that they found um, that was affected by this same person here. So much what? Bodies? Body, people. Dead people. bodies? They said that they oh, find. Oh, Lord, yeah. okay. And um, he was associated with so many different, um, you know, churches and um, a lot of ministers, a lot of um, singers and celebrity. Okay. So, listen... Yes. <laughs> so that's the end of that. You know, I, my heart goes out to his family. It's never um, a good thing to lose a loved one. Yeah. Whether and they're good or bad. So my family, my heart goes out to the family. My condolences. I know. To all three of the people that were lost in that accident. Yes. And, it, you know, the police officer that died, he was such a young guy. He was just 20 something years old and so forth and the other one they they both were young and he was there you know talking about church and he is god and all these things and when he was when they were there laughing and everything mm -hmm. he was just sitting there calm and they never have any uncuff and anything on him and he was just laughing 
and say, I am the Lord, <laughs> all this something. And then a few minutes later, a few hours later, that accident. Happened. Wow. That was his first appearance in court. Well, he never made it. He never made he it. Never made it. Oh, my goodness. So, oh, well, you know, that's karma. Karma. That's karma. Sometimes things happen. I know people and you can't that explain you're not sure why. if it's him. They're saying all type of stuff. They, oh, they're really? Not sure. <laughs> they're that not was sure. like a soap opera. Yeah. They don't know so if it was mad. him or somebody they're else. They're not sure if, he's, <laughs> if he really died. Oh. All this saying. That's why I don't really watch it and follow mm-hmm. it up anymore because I don't. I don't. Mm-mm, it's too okay. much. It's too much. Okay. Yeah. Well, tell us about some positive things that are going on in the church and with pastors and since you're you're involved i or... just i just want to <laughs> encourage the people i just want to encourage those who are going through some difficult time because in these days and time we are going through so much stress um anxiety and all these things um even in our community if you look around and if you would know what your neighbor is going through so I, would, I, I just want to encourage somebody out there today. You might be having pain in your body. You might be feeling down and depressed. But one thing I need you to know that there is a God. You might not even believe that there is a God. But I just want you to know that you just think positive. Know who you are and whose you are. And believe in your own self. And once you believe in yourself, then it's a possibility that you're going to come out from that place of hurt, that place of anxiety. Trust the true you, the inner you, the inner man that is in you, and, and stay positive at all times. Reach out to somebody who you can trust to speak with. Always, you always have Venita. You can always call her. Her number is 203 six eight seven two seven seven you need some great you know information like you know she can encourage you and she can give you some good encouraging word we we are here for you this is we are here for you it's just free information that we have to give to you today so just be encouraged we love you reach out to us exactly and tell a friend to come and, and listen to us invite somebody over and let they come and watch and have and listen to what we have to offer because we have some good news coming up for the, the um for the summer you know in around you know new haven west haven area where you know we have some little i'm gonna share about share that later on in the future but Yes. Just How about positive. today? Can you we get a to... can we get a hint? <laughs> <laughs> she gonna she gonna tease us and say she's gonna tell us something good later. I want to know now. Just a little okay. hint, because yeah. J- just the other day, I was sitting in my <laughs> in my home, you know, and I was I was just thinking that I want to share. I want to give back to my community, and I am a hairdresser as well. And I know that there's a lot of single mothers, single fathers out there that. Mm-hmm have the kids and they can't even, you know, afford to send them to the salon or the fathers, they can't comb their children, they keep their daughters here. And I take it up on my head and I begin to write. Because the Bible said, when you have a vision, you make it plain on paper and then you pray about it. So what I do, it comes strongly into my spirit. And I said, you know what, this is what I'm going to do for my community. I'm going to have you know make some posters give it out and make sure i get some single mothers with their kids that they can bring them to my home like you know every the first i would say the first five kids come they get their hair done for free and if they want to hear um come i can charge them like twenty dollars thirty dollars you know to to, to, um, well, we're just going to focus on getting the information out the for money. the free ones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's a great service. Well, yes. To, you I'm know, sorry about that part. That's I'm, okay, I'm, yeah. yeah. That's I'm, a great service. That's, but the part that I want to really put out there is really the first five kids come. It's going to be free. I'm going to shampoo their hair and give their hair a nice, you know, style. And, and um, in the 
so and make much them time. feel good. That'll make yes. somebody feel good inside. Especially, you know what? I saw something like this on Facebook. Like um, there's like barbers that go around and they might see a homeless person with their hair overgrown, beard Beard, overgrown and things like that. And what they do is they just kind of take them under their wing and do exactly what you're doing, a community service. So what you're providing is a community service for some people that may not be able to have Have. a service like that otherwise. So anyway, what they do, they take Mm -hmm. them in, wash their hair, wash their face and everything. And when they finish with this person, you would never know who they are. They look and feel so good. So, so beautiful. They one feel thing like about the giving back to the community is, is, is passion. You're compassion. You're passionate about making someone feel good. And by making them feel good, that's where that makes you feel good. And that's when it's better to give than to receive. And I never understood that as a kid. I was like, better to give than receive. I'd rather receive. Oh, yes. But when, you, when you're when you older. You'll understand. And yes, you'll understand a lot more. So, and everybody needs a little help out there. I think that's a great gesture, Donna. Yes. To uh, do hair. And yeah. if you're going to do the first five, I mean, you do braids and yeah. all types of things. And you can help people with all types of hair oh yes especially I, I have another plan too yes um after like every month end i would you know have a little cookout for do like a burger and um hot dogs for the kids and have them over play little games with them mm-hmm. you know just like that yeah and even i'm thinking about even with those who are suffering from cancer who have, you know, they hear, losing their hair. I could do, you know, a quick weave on them to make them feel their best again and that they can laugh again, even though what's going on inside of them, they don't have to think about it, that they still have life and they, they still have life. Exactly. You know? And yeah, I understand what you mean exactly. So like I, I donate to St. Jude's all the time. Um, I write checks to them all the time. Oh, yes. And some of the little girls on there used to have really long hair, but when they go through chemo, they lose their hair, they lose their eyebrows and things like that and become really self-conscious about that. So what you're talking about is making them feel good again, giving them confidence and, confidence. you know, and how they look. And that's important when you're a little girl, yes, you know, maybe yes. as an older woman, you're like, okay, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But as a young girl, you know, without any hair and then being able to give Tipsy. her some hair that won't come off more like a weave, not a wig. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just, that's just a wonderful, wonderful gesture. That's what, yeah. that's a true meaning of, of community service, what yeah. you're doing. You know, I know, I know some barbers that do things like that as well. That's a great service. Yes. Yes, so um, I don't have anything like that that I'm doing, except I give out free information to help folks and, you know, put them in better places with their insurance. Yes. Um, like I said on this show many times, I love what I do. I feel like I'm not gonna retire. You know, I'll probably lessen my work because I sit at kitchen tables most of the day and I help people enroll on Medicare and, you know, set up life insurance for their final expenses and things like that and help them with their retirement income. There are some people, you know, that may not understand how to uh, manipulate their 401k. They may not understand RMDs, required minimum distributions, and how a 401k can be a spin down uh, contract. So I help them extend that over the period of their entire lives. Mm. And that's called like a guaranteed lifetime uh, income which a lot of people are not aware of, but I can, uh, I give them that information. And it feels like a little ministry because you're helping people put them in a better place. You're saving, you're helping them save money and helping them know that as long as they live, they're gonna get a certain amount of money every single month to help supplement maybe their social security because there's gonna be inflation, you're gonna need extra money. So I take a lot of pride in doing things like that. And I do that for free. I I sit down in people's homes 
and give them this information so that they can make a good decision on where to put their money or if they should buy life insurance and let them know what they qualify for and, and which Medicare plan to select. You know, there's just so many different ways to help people, yeah. you know, and I love doing that. See, yep, so. when, you, when you have passion yes. for something, you're going to do your best and you're going to always want to help. Exactly. Because it doesn't make sense that you do something that you don't have passion for. That's called a job, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and that's yeah. what this was at first. You know, a lot of people go to work and they don't like their jobs, but yes. they may have, you know, great insurance benefits. Um, it's a great salary. That's a way to you know, support your family and this and that and the other. So I call that work. What I do, I, you know, I don't really call it work. I call it more like a ministry. I feel like, you know, when I get up in the morning and I look at my appointment book and I have three appointments today, four tomorrow, whatever, I look at those appointments as I am going to help somebody in one of these categories today. And that's my goal, to help somebody. And giving them that information is absolutely no cost to them whatsoever. I drive anywhere in Connecticut, sit at their kitchen table, and we go over, you know, their Medicare, their long-term care, life insurance, or retirement income for absolutely free. And give them that information, and it helps them make a better decision. So that's, I don't call that work. I love what I do. Now that I understand what I do, I love it even more. The first couple of years, I was just looking for a paycheck. Right. Uh, you know, I'm not going to try to front. <laughs> well, it's just like me as a CNA. As a yeah. CNA, mm -hmm. I love to take care of the elderly. I love to see when you take care of them and they just have this smile on them and they telling you, God bless you are Oh my God, I appreciate it. I just love to see them, you know, and teaching them like those that kind of losing their ability to do stuff. And when you kind of help them to gain back that, you know, that, that, um, independence independence and stuff. Yeah. Yes. And they start to find, see, oh, I never know that I could do this. Therapy. Yes. Yeah. I didn't know I could do this. <laughs> you make, you make me do this. One lady <laughs> said to me, you make me can do this. I said, you can do all things through Christ. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. So it, it is just a beautiful thing to be right alongside with people. It I'm is. a people person. Yes. So yes. am I. So my mother, um, about, I don't know, three or four weeks ago, she fell. My mom's 82. She fell out of the bed. Oh, Lord. And somehow she had an infection. I think the reason she fell out of bed is because she lost her center of balance. Her equilibrium was off, and she fell out of bed, and, and she had some type of infection in her arm. Wow. So she had to go to the hospital. Uh, because of the infection, she also had low sodium, and she has a lot of issues going on. And like I said, oh. she's 82 years old. And so she's in the hospital for a couple of weeks. She had to have surgery to get the infection out. And then um, from there, since she could not move her arm, she had to go to a rehab center at Ludlow. Really? And so, yeah, she was in, she was in there, I think, a couple of weeks until the swelling went down, until she was able to Best place work to be her in, arm. Yeah. And so I was there visiting her, and one of Donna came, not Donna, but another CNA, and she was <laughs> all just, you know, these, I, I commend you guys so much for what you do because it takes passion. That, and you know what? That is work too. What I do, I sit at tables, I'm a pencil pusher. That's not real work. You guys are lifting these people. You're yes. pushing them. You're picking their spirits up by saying, you gotta okay, love it. do two more of those exercises. I think you could do two more. And every time you do that, you give them the confidence and you give them the mobility that yes. they need in their bodies to do what they need to do. Yes. And so, you know, that's very important. I mean, there are like two professions in this world that I have the highest respect for, and that's the medical profession and the teaching profession. Oh my goodness. Mm, yes. You know, that teachers, so I think- have a lot to deal with. There. You guys can't get paid enough. Teachers yes. and uh, nurses and CNAs, the medical field. I, 
There's I not enough this, money to pay you for what I you do. I say this all the time. <laughs> we, the CNAs, we does all the dirty work. And yes, we get so, such a, a, a low pay. I think yes. they need to up our, our pay. They need to up it. <laughs> they were talking about that, too, on the news. You got to yeah. start watching the news. <laughs> They I know you to. don't watch the news, but they were talking about that. Yeah. You know, Governor Lamont was talking about that today. So um, I saw him this morning. I was at the gym, and that was one of the things that he was talking about. And it's true. Yes. And they were talking about, uh, what do you call it, hazard pay or COVID pay or whatever you want to call it. So all the grocery store workers, the nurses, the teachers, all the frontline front workers, workers that went to work when there was no vaccine and COVID was at its highest, highest infection, infection rate. Oh. oh my goodness, these people still got up, risked their lives and you, and their family lives as well and went to work so that we could go to the grocery store and buy a lettuce or buy food or whatever. Yeah. And you know, there were people shut down in a nursing home where you guys mm -hmm. had to Good take nice. care of them. We and the infection move. was just going all throughout the nursing home. So I, you know, I can't say enough how much you guys do. Um, so I want to also say to everybody out there, we are here for you. You have my number, you have down a number, send us a text message. We'd love to hear from you. Yes. And I'm going to try to find out if there's a PO box, uh, if you want to mail a card or mail information in. Right. So I will find out about that, but, um, and I can't really speak on if there is or isn't, but I definitely have a cell phone and you could definitely text me um, anytime you want. Any yeah. last words, Donna? We have about one I, minute left. Yes. <laughs> and I just want to say to those of you who are going through a hard time, you can always reach out to me. If you need me to pray with you, you can always reach out, send me a message. It's always, prayer is always free. Just call me and I'm ready to pray with you. God bless. Amen. And she could pray too. <laughs> I've, <laughs> I do appreciate that. The, I, I remember when I first met her, she's on the phone with somebody and she just started praying and I was driving. I almost closed my eyes and started, <laughs> and started doing the prayer with her. I was like, oh my God, that was some good, good preaching. So yeah, if you need prayer, there's the number you have it. Um, I just want to say thank you. Welcome back. You're welcome. Okay. And um this is, thank you everybody for joining us today. This is the David, David Goodman, Goodman Reality and, Reality and Truth, Truth Show, Show, and we're, we're on, on your, your side. side.